I hope I hope it's working today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. <laughs> Welcome everyone today. Last but not least today about the frozen shoulder and the psychological part in this. I have nothing to disclose. What is a frozen shoulder? Like a lot of people heard about it, a lot of people treated it, a lot of people encountered the frozen shoulder. It's like a big jar, majority of times, where everyone is putting everything. If we have no option to treat something and the patient has, no one has an idea what is going on, the patient is lost, there is a lot of pain, there is a lack of range of motion, then it's a frozen shoulder. So from this big jar of the big soup of everything, we are starting from time to time to picking up actually what is going on. And no one wants to deny that there is an inflammation in the joint and there is the activation and fibroblasts activation and restrictions in the range of motions. But what actually is going on here with this pathology? As we can see in the papers around the world, it's already mentioned that the capsule is getting, is getting inflamed. I have a pointer here. Is it pointing? No, it's not pointing. All right. So we can see on the last pictures here, uh, we see the restrictions and we see the inflammation of the capsule. But what is general and the the main things which we can see from the, all of those papers that we have big amount of women affected by this condition more than men. There is increased pain, decreased the range of motion, worse quality of life, depression and anxiety. So depression and anxiety can come from the worsened quality of life. And why such a thing is going on here? Let's see how the frozen shoulder with time is going. So if we take the big time frame, usually the three stages of the frozen shoulder appeared. Please have a look. It's zero to three months, then it's three to nine months. In all of those phases, we can still do a lot of things with the patients. And then we have nine to 18 months. And some papers, they are showing even two years or three years to a full recovery if we will not do anything with this and leave the patient living by themselves. But can someone point me a one person, one person in this room, if I will come to you and tell you, oh, okay, you will be living with this pain. Oh, from time to time will be better, but the uh, majority of time you will have decrease in range of motion, you will have pain, you will have worse quality of life, but you will get used to that. And that will be like this coming and going for three years. Would you agree for that? I don't think so. I don't think so there is one person who will agree for decrease in the quality of life. But in all of those stages, as the physiotherapy, and if the physio is working together, I want to point it, together with a doctor, and we are a team communicating with each other, and communicating certain things to the patient, we are able to work in all of those three stages with the patient. The work will be different, the physiotherapy will be different, maybe we have to use some medications in certain, in all of those stages to decrease the pain, especially at the beginning, because less pain, better range of motion, as we can see. And this is the example of the patient with a frozen shoulder in my practice. So we can see here, she has the limitations in her range of motion. And on this picture, please have a look on the scapula movement and the whole block. So the scapula together with the shoulder, they are moving on block, all together. Patient has big pain, and she is trying to compensate by the whole of the body just to reach as high as possible. So she will have a better quality of life, better daily living activities com completed. And comparison of the treatments of the frozen shoulder around the world. 
So we all have here that in all of those stages, we have the conservative treatment. In all of those stages, we are still trying to convince the patient to work, to practice, to exercise. But not always it's effective. And sometimes, even what I, which I found, there is an Ayurveda protocol which is showing us what can be done in this kind of situations. So it's usually all about the pain reduction. It's all about the gentle stretching and working with the patient in the range of motions where there is no pain. And why we are talking that why we have to work with the patient where there is no pain, why, why we cannot stretch the patient as much as he can and let him scream until we will not reach our goals like physios. Uh, this is important because the patient has the psychological block. More pain he feel, more restrictions they will have. And the loop will close. They will have no chance to leave the loop by themselves. We as a physios and you as doctors, it's good to help the patient to get out from the loop, the loop of pain. Soft tissues mobilization, gentle one, not aggressive. More aggressive we are, bigger block, bigger avoidance. Home exercises, of course, it needs to be explained to the patient. Hyaluronan and the densification of hyaluronan within the fascia layers. And the fascia, as we all know, there is like a cover of the vas muscles, the fibers and all of our body can transmit the nerve, they have the nervous endings, so they can transmit the pain information to the brain and again activate the certain reactions of the body for the treatment or for the condition. So more densification, more restrictions. And if we will start to work on the fascia layers, we'll start to work on those densifications, then we can achieve a very good effects. And um, one of my favorites one is Indiba. No connections here with the company, it's just one of my favorite tools. And how we can activate the cells, talk to the cells in the human body to have better transport within the cells, cells to cells, to increase the blood flow, to increase, and it's helping to increase the relaxation of the muscles and the soft tissues. And in the same time, the hyaluronal layers will start to be less dense. Another very interesting, uh, very interesting research was published, and here we can see the MRI after the treatment of the soft tissues mobilization and the densification of the hyaluron and how they decreased after the properly done soft tissues mobilization with the patient. Shockwave therapy, if there is no big pain, not in the acute stage, if we will have the acute stage and we want to mobilize, mobilize and uh, try to reach any effect with the shockwave, there will be no effect, but because there is too much pain, patient will run away and will say, I will never get back to this physiotherapist, I will never talk to this doctor because they are treating me badly, I feel too much pain, I don't want to do it anymore. And I want to go, for example, for the surgery, which, which is not always the solution. Because if we will do the surgery, the frozen shoulder has a tendency to get back. Because it's not always about the physical condition. It's majority of time the psychological. We cannot forget about the muscles all around the shoulder. We should relax them. They should be able to work together with us to work and help the patient to do the certain exercises. If they will be too stiff, all of those muscles, they will create the specific tension all around the shoulder, and then the patient has no idea what is more painful. Either it's the capsule, or it's the whole hand, or it's the whole shoulder, or it's irradiating somewhere, so, and it's creating more panic within the patient itself. Some samples of the exercises that we can do with the patient, and it's the gentle stretching that we can peer until, of course, the patient can. It cannot be implemented by force. So it's not like the patient has to stretch as much as you can. Yes, you can do it and push the patient to the wall or push the patient to the bed. 
uh, patient needs to be able to perform those kind of exercises in the range of motion at the beginning that the patient can actually do. Later on, maybe after a week, maybe after a few days, patient will get back and tell you, like, listen, last time I did exercises and I, and I was able to reach on this, until this level. And then he will come, ah, now I can reach until this level. And that will be our greatest achievement and the big achievement as the physios. We can use different tools and different devices to perform basically the same exercises for the patient. Whatever is more likely for the patient to accept and it's easier for him at the beginning or for her to, to start to do. Psychology. Very interesting paper published and there was taken the opinion of the patient about the, what they think, or what the, about their condition when they have the frozen shoulder. And please look at this. It, it's hard to describe how much it limits you. You can't do anything. So it's automatic withdrawal from the normal daily living activities, from normal life, from parties, let's say like this, from socializing with other people. Once the pain was alleviated, then I could cope with everything else. Pain is a very important structure. It's a very important thing. Less pain, better cooperation of the patient with the physio, with the, with the exercises, and with themselves. The worst part, which was taken from this paper, is had I woke up next morning still in the same sort of pain, then yes, I may not still be here. This is very strong message to everyone that some patients, they are not able to cope psychologically with their condition and with the withdrawal. So we need to help them to achieve slowly, slowly, small goals at the beginning. Later on, you can go for the big goals. But the most important is psychologically that they will be able to cope with that. We cannot leave them with this condition by themselves because it can end it up tragically. I almost burns in tears. I can feel it now. I was like, oh my God, someone understands me. And this is the comment about the physiotherapy actually process and the cooperation with the doctor itself. Patient was so happy that finally someone understands the problem. Finally, someone is able to take proper care of the patient. And finally, someone is able slowly, slowly, not fast, but slowly, slowly in the proper direction help the patient to achieve proper goals. The loop of fear. We have an injury or we don't have an injury because a lot of frozen shoulders are coming without the injury. Pain experience, and if everything is fine, there is no fear, there is a confrontation of the pain from the patient's side and then there's a recovery. Easy, but when we have too much pain, some people, they can develop into pain catastrophizing and then if they had the more information from the physio bed treatment from the doctor, oh my God, you will be suffering with this three years. Then they are going to Google, they are trying to find the condition, they are finding a lot of not important stuff, which scares them even more. Then have pain-related fear even more, avoidance, visibility, because they cannot do normal daily living activities, Pain again, more pain, more catastrophizing, anxiety, depression from withdrawal from the normal life. And that's what is proved about the depression and anxiety that all the patients who are already having predisposition to have the depression, anxiety, they can develop the condition of the frozen shoulder can be worse. They can develop the frozen shoulder after a majority of injuries. And this kind of condition can return to them after a certain amount of time. Home message. Explain it. That is the most important the home message that everyone should take with them today. Because explanation from the, for the patient, and if the patient understands everything properly and is able to cope, according to certain moments of time, this is very important. Everything else will come together with that. Make it easy. No need to put the patient and push them to reach the highest levels from day one. 
keep it warm because hot relax the soft tissues, relax the muscles, can decrease the densifications of the hyaluronan. Work in no pain and stretch it slowly, slowly, together with physio, together with patient, and then patient has to do it by himself at home. Thank you so much for your attention today.